Hello everyone, welcome to Talk Here with Dr. Laz, your favorite health program on television. Reaching you from Niger's capital city, Abuja. My name is Dr. Laz Eze. Yes, uh, today I'll be discussing biomedical research in Nigeria, the progress and the prospects. Um, biomedical research is this area of science that looks at uh, the, uh, the studies of the normal functioning of the body of animals and also of human beings, uh, the diseases that affect the body, what causes those diseases, how can they be prevented, how they could be treated, as well as, of course, the relationship between man and the environment. Everything that has to do with that is what biomedical research focuses on. Is that area of medical science that we could say is still at largely an elementary stage, not just in Nigeria, but in many parts of the developing world. Some progress have been made in the past decade. And recently, a, a group of diver Nigerians from diverse backgrounds uh, pushing for sustainable funding and improvement of quality health care in the country, known as the National Advocates for Health. Uh, visited some biomedical research facilities in Lagos. I'm the secretary of the group, yes, uh, and uh, I was part of that visit, and I could say that uh, some of the things we saw were quite encouraging, and there are also a number of recommendations that we think uh, we could make biomedical research much stronger in the country. So on the program today, I'll be bringing that report to you, sharing that story, of what's happening at Biobank facility in Lagos and also the Nigerian Institute of Medical Research. Do stay with us, we'll be right back and you can't wait to know more about this. In 2014, the Ebola outbreak you know, took the country by the storm and sh shook the roots uh, of our medical system, especially in Lagos State. And of course, post-Ebola response, which many felt Nigeria handled better than a, a lot of persons expected, and especially uh, the Lagos State government, where the index case was identified. A number of things happened, and uh, the Ebola virus disease uh, the need to establish uh, some framework and research facilities to prepare the states for better response in the coming years uh, led to the establishment of the Lagos Biobank by the Lagos state government and some other partners, especially international partners. In 2018, uh, the facility was opened in, I think, 30th October 2018 by the Lagos state government. And it became handful in 2020 when COVID-19 outbreak came up. One of the key objectives of the uh, Lagos Biobank uh, facility, as you know, uh, captured on their website, was to promptly diagnose diseases of public health importance during routine surveillance activities and during outbreaks of emerging highly pathogenic infectious diseases or incidence of environmental toxicity towards effective clinical management. There are a lot of uh, other objectives stated there. And uh, this was why the National Advocates for Health, led by its chairman, uh, Honorable Muhammad Usman, who was a former uh, vice chairman of House of Representatives Committee on Healthcare Services between 2015 and 2019, uh, had interaction with the Lagos State uh, Commissioner for Health uh, Professor Akin Abayomi, and uh, he shared some insights on what the Biobank facility is about. Uh, let's watch and see what he had to say. Historically, the Lagos State Biobank, and you'll hear a bit more about it, but ex at a very high level, we, we, we recognized in 2014 when the Ebola outbreak came that you know there is something that you need and you need a high level um, biosafety and biosecurity facility to be able to first of all diagnose 
and secondly keep store inventory and prepare to uh, carry out research so what we didn't have during Ebola was exactly that opportunity to comfortably have trained personnel in a fit-for-purpose facility such that you will not be putting your staff at risk. We all know how many laboratory scientists and pathologists died during Ebola because of just wrong infection prevention control environments. Uh, we know how many clinicians died. Uh, the same thing could have happened during COVID here, except we had prepared from Ebola, knowing and listening to the WHO that something big was coming. We didn't know what it was. We, uh, we don't know whether COVID is what they're talking about or whether something else is coming. But luckily, in the four or five years after Ebola, we spent a long time training Dr. Mathieu and some of his staff are here. You will see the rest. You know, we were like a, a voice in the wilderness. You know, nobody understood what we were doing. Nobody understood what we were saying. If we can't save ourselves, well, then we, we don't really have much to talk about. You recognize that the new economy is, is called the bioeconomy or the knowledge economy. And the knowledge economy is driven by discovery. And discovery requires access to samples and biological data. And if you can convert the value of crude oil to knowledge, to, to biological sample or data, then you're operating on par. And you soon realize that you can participate in the knowledge economy because you're controlling and regulating access to sample and biological data. We drove a multi-billion dollar uh, Naira economy around COVID by regulating the biological and data and bringing in the private sector to feed into the response, which uh, as government, that, that, that COVID-related economy generated and replaced the, um, the impact of COVID on Lagos. Exciting narratives there from Professor Akia Bayomi, the Lagos State uh, Commissioner for Health. He also explained that every positive sample uh, from uh, the beginning of COVID-19 had been stored in that biobank facility. And uh, they are currently diversing into other areas, you know, such as diseases like um, tuberculosis, monkeypox, um, cholera, flu, and even Lassa fever. You know, for those uh, in, in that have good knowledge of infectious disease uh, prevention and control, they will understand that surveillance and also these data are really critical in planning and even in response as well as surveillance. So uh, the director of the Lagos State Biobank, uh, Dr. Bamidele Mutiu, uh, was also at the meeting and he took us round, we took a tour of the facility. Uh, we, we saw a number of new facilities, including a genomic sequencing machine uh, that we just have three in Africa, two in uh, South Africa, uh, one here in Nigeria. And let's hear what uh, Dr. Mutiu Bamidele had to say about the facilities at the biobank. One in three in Africa is a robust platform. Uh, it's able to run 284 whole genome sequence for any of the organism or human uh, de 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 genetic material that you brought in. And 284 samples can be run over to, uh, 48 hours. So it's robust and the versatility is much because it's an open, though it's a closed system, but it can easily be adapted to, to, for any form of diagnosis that we want to do. And we use it to monitor the variant that has been circulating in Lagos in the past, since the outbreak of the COVID-19 in Lagos State. I'm really happy with the progress uh, the Lagos State government has made in that regard. And I so wish that other states uh, could uh, consider investing in this, you know, because everything does not, uh, everything must not be left for the federal government. At least if one state per geopolitical zone could have this kind of bank, it not every state not necessarily need to have it. You know, it could be a referral center for other states uh, to also uh, 
kind of send their samples to. In the second segment of the show today, uh, I'm going to be taking you to the Nigerian Institute of Medical Research, uh, also located at Yaba, Lagos, Southwest Nigeria. You know, the distance between the biobank and this is too, is not even far from each other. And I'm happy that there's some collaborative effort between both institutions, especially in the area of medical research. I will be back after this break, but don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you are yet to do so. Nigeria has the highest diabetes rate in Africa. Sugar sweetened beverages are a major cause of type 2 diabetes. Diabetes care can cost over 100,000 Naira a month. Sugar sweetened beverages are easy to find, but they are hard on health. The sugar sweetened beverage tax can save lives. Enforce it now. Welcome back to Talking with Dr. Laz, your favorite health program on television. Yes, we've been talking about biomedical research in Nigeria and uh, the situation at the Lagos State Biobank and the Nigerian Institute of Medical Research. Yes, now uh, the Nigerian Institute of Medical Research was established in 1977, you know, a lot of years ago, uh, you know, through the National Science and Technology Act. It was then known as the Medical Research Council of Nigeria. From there, the name changed to the National Institute of Medical Research. And in 1993, it was further changed to Nigerian Institute of Medical Research. The uh, National Advocates for Health had an interactive session with the Director General, Professor Babatunde Salako. Incidentally, he was one of my uh, teachers in medical school at Ibado. And uh, he shared some insights on what the Institute uh, has been doing uh, and it appeared there is some good news with the, uh, the COVID-19 outbreak. The Institute was able to assess a lot of funding, both from the government of Nigeria and also some international partners, and that greatly enhanced uh, the level of work and research happening at the center. Let's hear from Professor Salako himself on what he said about what's happening, the use of uh, uh, young scientists and other issues at the Institute. When we talk about young scientists, we are going to see many of them in the lab. Um, because in the last few years, um, Naima has attracted most of the young minds in Nigeria um, who saw Naima as a place to acquire practical skills, which they didn't have uh, in their universities. Um, so we have quite a number of young uh, people uh, both as students, you will see them, you can talk to some of them. Naima developed some local products and also conducting research on local vaccine production. He's also conducting research on the use of local herbs or, you know, trado medicine as some may want to refer it to provide solutions to some of our health issues. Let's hear what uh, Professor Lacoste said on this. We have quite a number of local products that we have done. And we have, this year we've set um, a target of about three uh, for ourselves. One, a lot, one is almost ready. We are hoping to develop uh, an hepatitis B diagnostic kit that can also measure viral load. One, because we, the one we buy from outside, from time to time, we are not able to get it to buy. And people want to do tests, you cannot do the tests. Sometimes they would have paid, they would have collected sample, the kids will not arrive, and people will be complaining, this and that. So we charge them that, one, see, we have developed others. So if we develop this before, then you can also do the others. Uh, and I think that is almost ready. Then we're also looking at cholera diagnostic uh, tests. That one like, like, a, like a point of care. Um, we are looking at something like a dipstick. Uh, we just dip into the stool or urine or blood or whatever. And we'll be able to come up with 
I think I believe the third one was more of, of an ELISA diagnostic kit for screening for COVID. Uh, COVID, we are looking at maybe universities or schools where they want to do screening before the, the students are uh, going to go back to school or going to boarding houses. So those are the, the ones we set out for ourselves this year. And we are working very hard on that. Wow, that's, that's some great progress. Uh, we also had a tour of the facilities and uh, these were th some of the things we, we were told during that tour. Very important equipment in this toxicology laboratory. It's very important in our drug discovery research and experiments. We also use it um, for pollutant and contaminants determination and uh, identification. It's very important in our um, analysis of drug of abuse um, analysis, like in blood. Okay. You know, those uh, 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 tramadol, yeah, so, uh, and also in determination of a lot of contaminants in water, fruit, uh, aflatoxins, major causes of cancers. Uh, this is a very important uh, equipment, also. It is actually the newest in the series of this type of equipment. It is important for uh, the analysis of um, elements, especially heavy metals like lead. Lead, mercury, and all of them in water, in, even in human blood, in fish. And because we have seen that most of um, these things that we have now cause infects that people just fall and die, and then liver, kidney diseases, most of them actually due to things like this that persons they don't have a history of anything, and then you find that they just die. But we are linking some of them to this. So, this is the important and it is. Especially and peculiar because it has what we call auto sampler. It's different from the series that they uh, made before. Then I think in Nigeria now this is the newest. So this is the DMC, and main ID, both courtesy of COVID-19 form. So what we do in here is to clone um, a segment from another organism into E. coli. So we are trying to clone a fraction of the SARS-CoV-2 virus into bacteria so that the bacteria can be producing the SARS-CoV-2 protein. I think the only lab or institution in West Africa that makes primers in-house. So everybody depends from the US, the closest South Africa and Europe to get their primers. Neymar has been exceptionally good in trying to sustain things. For instance, this instrument we are using was purchased in 2008 as one among three. The others have stopped working over 10 years ago. This one is still working. It's been in use in 2008, and so is a lot of things here. We've been continually improving things, and with this COVID that came, and we even some funding from government, we've been able to purchase newer instruments. So we are now doing NGS, next generation sequencing with million and different things. So to that, we are moving forward. And one of the things I also picked from this, they're now calling health an industry. And you can see all the people we have, different people. Some of them have actually finished here and they've gone ahead to start working in the health industry. Of course, it's not entirely about uh, progress. There are also some huge challenges. And Professor Salako, the DJ of Naima, summarized it in two sentences. Just hear him. But what we don't have are infrastructural support. And that comes from government support, government funding. For research, the government continues to be the largest spender. The National Advocates for Health you know, has some recommendations uh, to make to the government after having a look at this. And let's hear what some of the advocates had to say.
you need research to continue to practice efficient and effectively your medicine. So for me, it's an eye opener. They are doing quite a lot. I didn't expect to see this much. And the challenge for all of us here is to continue to support them with advocacy to reach the maximum where they want to use. This is uh, a big place that requires a lot of funding from the Nigerian government. We had a discussion about the issue of Lassa fever vaccine. Lassa fever vaccine requires a lot of funding and budget. So we are calling on the National Assembly. We are calling on federal government that from next year, 2023, there should be adequate funding for last uh, fever vaccine. Not only that, uh, we should also uh, invest in the COVID-19. We are not done yet. We have to be on our guard to ensure that we don't have any uh, another wave of the uh, COVID-19. The overall health security in Nigeria, we also need funding, public emergency, the port health, and every other effort in Nigeria to strengthen uh, health security. We need to have adequate funding. We should encourage private sector investment. We should encourage development partners to partner with the government. We should also encourage our business community. That is our philanthropy to also join the government in putting adequate funding for health security and also health financing for overall health sector. I'm really excited and I do wish that the government of Nigeria invests sustainably in research. It's not just a dash because the monies invested can also be used to generate some other money. Let us be the giant of Africa, let us be the big brother and provide solutions to the research, medical research needs of the West African sub-region. Let's make Nigeria a destination for research, not just West Africa, but for the entire sub-Saharan African continent. Let the policymakers not just see this as spending money, but also as an investment that is going to pay Nigeria in so many ways in the area of health security, where we ensure that we have local solutions to prevent uh, all sorts of biological threats that may emanate in future, and at the same time generate funds uh, that could be used to uh, support our health system. This has been a wow experience, being able to see things that um, one has seen abroad, having them here, to see the equipment that we see abroad, especially for people who go for medical, uh, um, medical intervention abroad. You see that things are able, you know, we are able to do them here. Um, I'm, I'm walking so tall and proud that Nigeria for Nigeria by Nigerians is possible. And the possibility of what Naima is doing is what should encourage government and encourage investors and encourage every other person that together we can build a strong health system that will work. And research has been said to be an imperative in what we are trying to do, in the reforms to make health functional in Nigeria. So we, we need to start thinking through and getting, getting to speak to, uh, let's say, uh, what we call research culture. People will wonder, how did I get my glasses? If the research was not done, we probably would be banging on each other, you know, all half blind. If, we, if there was no research in terms of uh, how the computers are working, where will we be today? The world has become a global village. It took research to bring us to where we are. So research is part of the development system and we need as a people, you know, to embrace research. I think the leadership as well as the staff need to be commended and encouraged as well. But um, anyhow they can get other research institutes involved in collaboration, there must be cohesion. And um, we can now say we are the giant of Africa. I can see it coming and um, we pray that it will materialize. All we require, you see, to do as advocates is to continue to uh, talk, you see, to uh, the government, you know, to continue to support, you know, this institute. Because I believe with the right, you know, support, with prioritization of research, this center will do wonderfully and it can serve not only Nigeria, but Africa. I like to see more centers like this in Nigeria. Naima has taken leadership and I have no doubt that they can extend their activities even beyond the shores of Nigeria. 
and know in the future there are a number of uh, research uh, protocols that will be developed in addition to policy documents and the message I have for the research center is that even when the leadership is to change they should employ somebody with the same level of commitment and experience who certainly appreciates the quality research that is going on. The healthcare system cannot be functional efficiently without research. Research is priority. Nigeria needs more funding and support to strengthen medical research in Nigeria. The importance of biomedical research can never be overemphasized, especially this era that every country is working very hard to protect its citizens from biological hazards and also respond appropriately to public health emergencies. Health security must be adequately funded and the government should and must be the highest spender in this regard. Thank you for watching. My name is Dr. Lars Eze. We hope you still subscribe to our YouTube channel if you are yet to do so and follow us on our social media handles. I look forward to seeing you same station, same time next week. Bye for now.